Thank you. Thank you very much. So, hello everybody. My name is Daniele, and today I want to show you that uh, you should not be afraid uh, of using some 3D elements uh, in your applications. Let me give you a small introduction about myself. I'm uh, an Android freelancer. I come from Italy, more specifically in Milan, where I'm one of the organizers uh, of the Google Developer Group. Uh, we are organizing a dev fest for November, so you are welcome to come. Uh, and I'm also a Google Developer Expert. Uh, um, and I've been uh, talking at conferences, and I've been working on several topics uh, for the past uh, 10 years, from phones, uh, tablets, uh, wearables, uh, and more recently, automotive. Working on some automotive projects, uh, I've been able to explore some uh, of the, um, um, the frequent uh, topics that the car manufacturers want to introduce to their cars. In this video, you can see an example made by Porsche, and it was presented this summer, about uh, a 3D model of the car that the user can interact with. They can select some elements, they can rotate it, and they have some uh, visualization of the car directly in their, um, in their dashboard. Now, I didn't work on this project specifically, but I worked on some, on some uh, similar ones. And uh, creating something similar was a bit scary at the beginning because I didn't have any 3D experience, but uh, I actually discovered that it was easier than expected. This is especially thanks to libraries like the one that I'm presenting today, which is Filament. Filament is an open source library made by Google, and it's a multi-platform one. It can run on macOS, Windows, Linux, Android, iOS, and even on web. Google defines it as a real-time, physically-based rendering engine. What does that mean? It means that it uses a series of rendering technologies to create some kind of photorealistic rendering, like the one that you can see here. This one is not a picture. It's actually a rendering image created using filament. Under the hood, it uses a lot of math, a lot of uh, uh, very complex uh, calculations, uh, which uh, basically creates, uh, um, well, simulates how the light interacts with objects uh, in real life. Uh, don't, get, don't get worried about this slide, because all of this uh, is made by the library for you. You don't have to worry about that, luckily. <laughs> you should not confuse uh, uh, filament, which is, is a rendering engine, with a game engine. A game engine is more complex. It handles more uh, tasks. So, for example, dealing with physics, uh, dealing with uh, uh, collisions, uh, um, characters, uh, score, uh, input from the player, and more things. Usually, a game engine includes a rendering engine, which is just one part of the whole game uh, infrastructure. Filament is just the rendering part, which is something that uh, translates a model, a 3D model, and some programmatic uh, stuff into a rendered image. One thing that is really interesting about Filament is its documentation. It's uh, a level of documentation that you would usually find uh, in a scientific paper. You can see it has a lot of explanations on how it works under the hood. There are a lot of uh, um, formulas, a lot of examples, uh, and uh, it's really, really interesting. But again, it's, not, it's something that uh, is very good to know if you want to have a better knowledge about the whole system. Not necessary to create something very simple. But uh, I just want to highlight uh, what uh, a good amount of work was made uh, for this project by the creators. Some part of the documentation is especially focused on the different materials that filament can, uh, um, can uh, support. Um, you can see in this table that there are a lot of properties that you can tweak for each object material. So we will see some examples later, but for example, 
you can change uh, how metallic uh, or not an object is, uh, how smooth uh, or rough, uh, how reflective it is. And under the hood, filament will simulate how uh, light rays bounce uh, off an object. And of course, depending on the material, the effect is widely different. We will see some examples later. Speaking about the models that we can use uh, with filament, uh, there are two main formats that are supported. Uh, the first one uh, is named G GLTF, which stands for Graphic Library Transmission Format, which is uh, a format which is uh, um, JSON-based, so it's uh, human-readable, and uh, it's, um, it's easier to work with uh, for a human, for a developer, because it also supports linking different models. You can structure having a different model for textures, for materials, for actual shapes. And uh, it's, um, let's say, it's easier from a developer point of view, but it's less efficient. The other format, GLB, as the name suggested, the B stands for binary, is a more efficient and compressed way uh, of um, defining models which is better suited for a mobile application especially because it's, the files are smaller, they are self-contained, so textures, uh, animations, uh, models, they are all in, the, in one file, and they are uh, easier and also faster to parse for the library. So those are the ones that we will be focusing on today. We are developers, so Apart from some exceptions, uh, I don't think a lot of us are very good at uh, 3D modeling or creating beautiful uh, um, uh, models or elements. So most of the times, uh, a 3D model will come from uh, uh, one of our fellow designers or we will download it from the internet, from one of the lot of catalogs that there are. Before integrating them uh, into our application, it's good to have a preview and for that, there are a lot of websites, uh, like the one that I'm showing, where you can uh, inspect uh, the models to know the components, uh, the um, different sections of the model, and you can already have a preview on how the model will look with some background uh, and some test lighting, for example. Okay, jumping to filament, uh, one very good thing uh, which where you we could start from uh, is the official repo, which uh, especially for, un for Android contains a lot of samples. Those samples are standalone applications uh, that use the library and can be inspected with an increasing order of complexity. So, for example, starting from displaying a simple shape on the screen to have uh, a 3D version without lights uh, or with lights uh, and reflections, uh, making it uh, transparent so that you can have a bit of uh, Android UI with a 3D element. Uh, and finally, also loading a custom uh, 3D object uh, with uh, a lot of parameters that can be tweaked uh, directly in the UI. Okay, let's see now um, the example that I want to show you for today's presentation. So, I created an application that is basically a list, uh, like a catalog uh, of objects that uh, I've been printing with my 3D printer. It's a new hobby that I started this summer. And the application is a simple one. There's gonna be just a list of objects. For each one, there will be a 3D model that the user can interact with, uh, rotate it, uh, uh, analyze it, and to see some other properties that we will see later. The whole app uh, is gonna be open source. I'm go well, it's already open source. I'm gonna share the link later, and uh, I actually made it so that uh, each commit will follow the slides that are presenting. So it will start from the first commit, which is uh, pretty simple, and adding new features on top of it, uh, in the same way that I'm doing it in the, in the slides. So, to start, uh, the app uh, is made in Compose, because uh, I wanted to experiment uh, how to make uh, filament work uh, um, integrated in, in Compose. And uh, the base is not that interesting, honestly. It's a classic, I'm using uh, architecture components, so uh, I'm having just one activity. 
um, with, uh, again, with Compose, a view model for better encapsulation of the logic, and um, I'm uh, basically using scaffold and two main uh, uh, views. One for the list and one for the detail of one single element. To add filament, we just need uh, to start adding uh, the, gradle the gradle dependencies. And there are three main ones uh, uh, that are specific for Android. Uh, the base one is the one that contains uh, all the main needed logic, so the engine uh, and uh, all, the, um, all the libraries that are needed to actually show something. Mm. Then there are some util ones which are classes that make uh, our life easier when we need to interact uh, with the 3D objects. So for example, for uh, animation, rotations, uh, uh, doing some math calculation, which of course you can do it on your own, but uh, with this library, it's a bit easier. The last one is a library that is specific for loading uh, um, external models from file, which is what we are gonna do later. Because you can also create your object programmatically, but uh, it's a bit too complex and out of the scope for this talk. The first method that we want to call to initiate filament is uh, init, utils.init. And the documentation would say to do it uh, as soon as your activity starts. But in our case, we are going to do it uh, in our view model so that we can keep our, uh, our activity as clean as possible. Then we are going to add some of the core classes that are needed for our logic uh, related to filament. We are going to create the engine, which as the name suggests is uh, what uh, calculates uh, all the things and does most of the math uh, inside the library. Then we use two loaders, one for assets and one for resources which we will see later, they are used to load, uh, load, load some resources from files. Those, files, uh, those uh, uh, classes, they are used uh, inside the view model scope so that we can offload uh, um, most of the EV lifting and especially input output loading in outside from the main thread. We first create uh, a scene and then we use some methods from uh, uh, filament, which are uh, read compress compressed asset, uh, load model JB, JLB, and transform to unit cube to basically load a file, transform it to a model that the filament can use, and to scale it so that the, it is uh, on a size that is uh, standardized to one meter cube. Those are just uh, utility methods that are coming from filament, and they are a good point to start uh, and have a standard way of interacting with the objects. If we do like this, uh, we would already have a model, but it would be totally black when displayed. This is because uh, without any light, uh, you wouldn't see anything, like in the real world. So the first thing we need to do is to create uh, our virtual sun. To do so, we use a uh, uh, light manager that with its builder, it allows us to create uh, as many lights as we want. In this case, uh, we are going to create one with the type of uh, sun, which is one of the built-in types uh, in filament, uh, a given color, intensity, and direction. And then we add it to our scene. Filament supports uh, three types uh, of lights. Uh, directional, which uh, is basically thought about uh, uh, with the scope of emulating the sun, where all the light rays, they come from uh, infinite away, and they are all parallel. And filament supports only one directional light. You, can have, you cannot have more than one. Then you have point lights, where you define one point, and from that point, the, rays, the light rays, they go in all directions. So it's basically a dot, like a light bulb, a dot emitting lights. And then there is the spot, like the ones that are blinding me now. <laughs> Basically, is, uh, you have one point and you define a cone and uh, the light is only contained into that cone. Point and spotlight, you can add as many as you, as you want, just defining the properties that you are interested in. Filament then also uses uh, some more lights 
to create a more realistic environment. It uses more specifically um, Skybox, which is a, a texture that uh, wraps uh, the whole world that we are displaying, and some related uh, ambient light. Those are used to create uh, some diffuse lights uh, around the object uh, and also as a background. They are also important because uh, uh, they can be used for reflections. So if you have a, an object that is pure metal and very polished, you will see reflections of the environment outside, like it is in the real world. In our case here, we are reading them from files and um, using, uh, uh, creating indirect lights and create skybox, we can create the objects that are gonna be used by filament. Those files, uh, they can be downloaded from some catalogs online, which I will share later, or they can also be created from, uh, um, file, from image files. And uh, Filament has some utility methods that basically are able to detect from uh, an orthodiagonal picture where is the sun or where is the source of the light and automatically from a plain image create uh, ambient lights. It's very powerful. Okay, once we have uh, all our objects uh, loaded and ready to be displayed, we just model them uh, into an immutable state. This state uh, is just a data class uh, which contains uh, some, um, some utility things that are just uh, relevant to the app, so like the name, uh, the print time, but the most interesting one is the item scene. In this case, we, we include the engine, the filament scene, the asset, and the resource loader. We will see later the reason for this. The main idea here is that uh, we pass this item, this single object, and well, sorry, this state, to the composable, and each, one, uh, each time that the scene changes, so for example, when the user changes the object, the scene is updated. Our composable is uh, as simple as a wrapper for uh, a surface view. So in this case, I used the Android view, which is a composable that wraps uh, a traditional surface view, and it acts as a glue between uh, traditional uh, Android views and the composable world. Then I used two compose effects. One to continuously uh, render the scene because uh, it's needed, as we will see later, to have some animations and to have a smooth uh, updates of what we are displaying. And the other one, as a side effect, uh, to only update uh, the scene once uh, if the model changes and after the, recognition, the uh, recomposition. Then we create uh, a model viewer and then we set it up, uh, setting some, uh, uh, some parameters that are used by, com by filament. Here in this method, you can see we, are, we can set some uh, options like uh, dynamic resolution, the quality of the model, or the model rendering, uh, if we want to have a bloom effect, uh, anti-aliasing. There are way more options that you can set here, and they are all re related to the quality graphics uh, that we want to use. Some, they can be dynamic and can be scaled down if the device is not powerful enough, for example. I mentioned the model viewer. What is it? So, model viewer is a class that uh, uh, is avail available uh, in filament, but uh, I copied it and I tweaked it a bit. And uh, this give, gives me an excuse to show you what is made and what are its purposes. Model viewer is basically a glue between different uh, uh, filament components. It's created using the filament engine and the surface view where the, um, the scene is gonna be drawn. And uh, it receives different updates uh, from outside. So for example, when the user selects a different model, we need to update the scene and it receives uh, a callback every time it needs to render a new frame. So model viewer is basically the main class that is responsible to encapsulate the logic uh, for the whole filament uh, part. 
It is also responsible of uh, managing the camera, which, uh, as the name suggests, uh, it represents uh, the eyes that we are going to use, the virtual eyes uh, that we are going to use to see the scene. And being filament, uh, a realistic, uh, physically based engine, as you can see here, if you are a bit uh, passionate about photography, there are some parameters that are common from the photography world which you can actually tweak, like the um, shutter speed, the sensibility, the focal length, uh, um, the aperture. And these uh, will have uh, the same effect that we, they will have uh, on a real camera. So if you increase uh, the aperture, the, um, the depth of field is going to decrease. If you increase the length of the lens, then the background is going to be more compressed or not. Everything is made by filament for you, so you don't have to worry about it, but it's, it has some realistic effect. OK, finally, we can see our beautiful result, which again is not that exciting, I'm aware of it. But still, finally, we can see some model on our screen. To make it uh, slightly more interesting, we can perhaps uh, add some animations. And one way to do that uh, is to use uh, a plain old uh, value animator from Android, which uh, is going to emit uh, one uh, element, uh, one value for each of the 360 degrees uh, um, of the object rotation. Every time we get a new, ob uh, a new value from the value animator, we can then, we can then call camera.lookAt. And uh, as you can see here, camera look at uh, takes uh, three, uh, three poles of parameters, which are coordinates uh, in a 3D space. The first one, which is actually changing depending on the value, is the position on the world for the camera. So in this case, we make it actually rotating. And the central point where we are rotating is the position of the object, which in our case uh, is not changing. The last triple is the reference system. So basically, we are telling the engine where it's up, where it's down, and these kind of things. Again, this is not changing. We need to remember to stop the animator when the view is detached, of course, for the window. Otherwise, uh, we are going to have a crash. Now, having a continuous uh, animation is good for a showcase. But we want uh, the user to be able to interact with it a bit, uh, to give them a bit more control. To do so, we can intercept uh, touch events uh, from uh, our uh, uh, surface view using the classic uh, set on touch listener from uh, Android views. And then uh, in our model viewer, we can uh, use uh, two utility methods from filament. One is the camera manipulator which is, uh, as you can imagine, responsible to detect, uh, to, sorry, to do some math calculation depending on which gestures it receives. And the other one is a gesture detector. Gesture detector is the one that will receive uh, touch events from uh, um, our view. And it's going to detect if the gesture is going to be a drag, a zoom, or a pan and it will inform the camera manipulator accordingly. Then the only thing that we need to do in our render function is to call camera manipulator and to get the coordinates that we were, we were using before. So instead of using now values from the value animator, uh, which is just rotating around, we use the values from camera manipulator, which then is doing all the math for us to say, OK, if the user is dragging, like I'm doing in this video, just move the camera all around. And that's it. We already have some free user animations uh, already at this stage. Now that we added uh, some uh, interpolation from the user, it's even easier to understand, uh, for example, rotating the model around with different uh, skyboxes, how those are affecting uh, the, the actual model light. You can see here that with different skyboxes, the light is wildly different, and the shadows are as well. So this is just an example to show you the, uh, what are the differences and how skyboxes affect the model. 
Sometimes, though, we don't want to have uh, a skybox. We don't want to have a background because uh, it's nice to have some models um, completely integrated with our app UI. To do so, we first of all remove the skybox, but then also in the model viewer, we make our view, um, we blend mode as a translucent, and we set our texture view as not opaque, op opaque, sorry. Notice that uh, I switched from uh, surface view to texture view. This is because uh, um, with surface view, it would have been always on top of our UI, while sometimes uh, on Android we want to have it uh, uh, below some other elements. So for example, if we have uh, a bottom sheet layout going up, we want to cover the model. Filament is working at the same way, so all the classes, they can be used both with surfaces view or texture views. So it's not gonna change anything for us. Okay. To make the app more interesting and also to make it more realistic, uh, uh, given that I'm talking about 3D modeling and 3D printing, I want to also show what uh, a model would like uh, if I change the color. To do so, I added some small bit of UI, and uh, in, my, in my viewer, when I set uh, the item, I also change some parameter. So as you can see here, I can get uh, a reference to the renderable manager and then the material manager. Then I can use a set parameter for the material to change the base color factor with an RGB value. And this one, as you can see in the video, we, you can already see how it's gonna change. Uh, now, base color factor, as you can see, is passed as a string. Not great for type safety, but uh, this is what we can do with, um, with filament. But uh, it's just one of the parameters that you can use. You can also query all the available parameters for a given material using just the method material.parameters, which returns a list. And for each parameter, you have the name, which you would use uh, in the method that we saw before, the type, so if it's a 3D uh, coordinate, if it's just a float, uh, if it's an int, uh, and those values, they are matching the documentation that I showed you before. So for example, if we want to change something, for example, we are already changing the base color, but maybe we want to make the model more metallic or more or less rough, then those are the, mo the models that we can use. And again, just adding a couple of sliders in the UI, you can already see by making the model more or less reflective and or rough, you can see how the reflections are changing. You can see now here how the light is gonna bounce in a different mode depending on how rough or how metallic it is. This is all made by filament and is made with just those two lines of code. There are then some even more complex uh, uh, models. So for example, this one is a model that was created by a um, um, designer, friend of mine, Casper, which started from uh, an existing model. And uh, let me show you again. It's basically adding some uh, animations. So in this case, you can see an animation of a door opening. And these animations, they are all included in the same uh, GLB file. And luckily for us, uh, Filament uh, gives us some utility methods to actually access these animations. To start, uh, we create uh, another model uh, where we can define our animations. So we define a name, the duration, the target state, which in our case can be to be open or closed, and uh, when we start the animation. Then, at the same time that uh, in our view model we load the assets, we can use filament method um, animator to get the amount of animations with animation count. And for each animation we can extract the name, the duration, 
and then we start it uh, uh, as a state of off. Here it is. Then uh, in our model viewer, we can use a frame callback to get notified every time that is uh, time to, re to render a new frame. And depending if uh, the animation was triggered from on to off, we can basically use uh, um, filament animator again to apply an animation. We pass an ID, and when the user selects uh, one of the animators, as you can see, the model is refreshed. You can see in the video that is also happening uh, at the same time with the user rotation. So they are not conflicting with each other. And um, with filament, uh, it's super simple to just call uh, these methods uh, and calculate. Uh, because uh, at, at any given time, you know what is the current time and when the animation was started. So you can pass uh, a percentage of the animation progress. OK. Now we saw how to display a single object, but we want to also show a list of all the available objects. For this, uh, it's pretty simple. We just use uh, a compose lazy column, and for each one, we create a card containing that object. That card is going to be a simple surface, which will include uh, uh, the model and uh, a text with the name. The model itself uh, is going to reuse the same, uh, um, the same composable that I showed you before uh, with just uh, setting auto-rotate true. In this case, we don't want to intercept the user touch. We want the model to just rotate around uh, as a showcase. But uh, we can simply reuse the object. And uh, what is interesting is that we can uh, reuse some of the components that we had for uh, every single object. So for example, the indirect lights, uh, um, the physical light, which is the sun that we created before, the engine, the resource loader. All these, they are made in filaments that they can be reused between different scenes. And it's way more efficient to do so uh, instead of recreating them every time. Then, finally, it's just a matter of connecting the two things, uh, the list of uh, items. Uh, and when the user taps on one of the items, uh, the app will navigate to the different screen uh, related to that specific item. To do so, I just used uh, uh, the nav controller from uh, Jetpack Navigation. And with two navigation destinations, uh, I can just uh, easily have the app navigate from one object to the other and back. OK, before finishing, I want to leave you with just uh, a couple of links. The first one uh, is going to be the official uh, uh, filament uh, website and repository, where you can find all the documentation that I showed you before, uh, the samples, uh, a lot of demos. And um, despite being a pretty old uh, uh, project now, because uh, it was made in 2019, it's pretty active with uh, pull requests and issues open. Then I'm going to show you, if you want to start experimenting a bit, the second website is a catalog of totally free models, textures, and skyboxes, which can be downloaded and imported into Filament to test a bit. And finally, that's the repository for the app that I presented today. Again, I want to, you to remember that if you are curious, you can look at the history of commits. And each one is, full, is increasing the complexity so that you can start with a base, base model, then adding rotation, then adding um, user interactions, then animations, et cetera, et cetera. So it's following the path of this uh, presentation. And with this one, I thank you again for joining me. And I hope that uh, I make it a bit more, uh, that I was able to show you that uh, you should not be afraid too much about uh, interacting with 3D stuff, uh, even if we are uh, under developers. Thank you very much.